I don't know anything about German Expressionism. I've never had the privilege of learning art at school, so no. Born, I was born in Zambia, in Africa, um, and uh, my great-grandparents are from India, Punjab, and uh, my grandparents sort of moved to Kenya as part of the migration, so my mum was born there, and, and then, and, and then they, they moved to, to Zambia, which is where I was born. And um, from there, I, I grew up in, in quite a strict family, and I knew very early on that I didn't necessarily share the kind of visions that they had for me in life. Um, uh, and, and I think my soul knew before my physical being knew, because I was doing silly things at school. Like I was probably, I remember being at school at 10 years old, and June is when we have winter in Zambia, and by winter I mean you probably need a cardigan, okay. So I used to go to, to school in June to acclimatise to England because I'd heard how cold it was and I'd been here a couple of times. So I used to go to school with my uniform and without a cardigan. I'd get there and then I'd take the cardigan off and put it in my, in my bag because I think I'm acclimatising, yes, yes, now I can, I can survive England if I can do this. And they'd be like, you've got goosebumps, no, I'm fine, I'm fine. And, and I had no idea at that time, well, my soul did, but I didn't, that this was the path I was going to be taking. So I then uh, used education to sort of uh, leave uh, my parents and, and come out come out to England and so I went to school and um, obviously I had to stay at school so it was boarding school and um, what I was very excited about is suddenly there was no sunshine. I was like okay that's okay because we got lots of, uh, of sunshine in Zambia. It's like um, so we took it for granted, a bit like everyone takes the NHS for granted here, I guess. <laughs> yeah, we took it for granted, so that was okay. But I remember, uh, I remember sort of thinking, well, this is it then, I guess. And it just felt like I'd taken this big step and I felt this sick feeling in my stomach that I'm not sure I want to do this. I have to share a room with these girls and I don't know if I can and they don't know me and... And, and I just had that period where I remember ringing my mum and saying, I'm not sure I want it. And she says, oh, you'll be fine, you'll be fine. And after that weekend, I was, I was exactly fine. But I had it just for that moment over the weekend where I thought, oh, I, I, don't, I don't know if I want to stay here, really. You know, I don't know if I know the things to fit in here uh, well enough because people's... Uh, common knowledge or general knowledge would have been different to mine. Okay, that one feels really cold, so... Mm. We went to the West End in London and I saw this production and I was absolutely bowled over. I was... Um, it was... Um, I'm gonna wash that man right out of my hair. I'm gonna wash, and I absolutely loved it. And I think that was, yes, that was my first introduction to theatre ever. And I was taken in, totally taken in. And I thought, you know, up until then, we'd only ever watched uh, sort of films at home or Bollywood films or things like that. But I didn't even make the connection between the two. I was totally taken into this world and people dancing on stage and I loved it. The colour, um, the whole, how huge it was. Amazing. Uh, yeah, totally, totally taken by it. Yeah, that one's all right. He's laughing. I'm not sure what's coming out of his nose though, so, okay. I think what makes art in Leicester very, very interesting is the fact that Leicester is, I've always said this, Leicester is like an example to the world really because we have all different sort of cultures and backgrounds and ethnicities and all like this great melting pot sitting on the planet and everybody comes here and 
it's harmonious. You know, we, we have people doing peace treaties around the world to bring groups like this together, but Leicester's achieving it. And with all that kind of cultural melting pot happening in Leicester, the, it's, it's the whole world's cultures coming together and fusing. And that just helps creativity grow even more. And so it's very empowering for individuals. Colours, I do like the geometric shapes, I'm not so sure about the, the, the whole rest of it, to be honest. Uh, do I think art should be challenging? No. Should, uh, should we push ourselves outside our comfort zone? Yes, because that helps us grow, um, grow our souls, grow our potential, uh, become more rounded individuals and make the world a smaller place. Black and white, okay, uh, nothing. Now, you see, somebody else asked me this the other day. They, they, they were saying how they don't speak Punjabi, which is what my parents speak, um, and they wish they did. And I had to ask them, I said, well, why? Why do you wish you did? Well, because we've got to keep the culture alive. I, I think we are fluid, and I think I'd, I'd, we should just move and grow with how we feel at any one time, not because we have to. I don't think we have to do anything. You know, uh, Shakespeare was creating language, so when people get on their soapbox about Twitter speak, you know, I use Twitter speak all the time, um, LOL and LMFAO and, and stuff like that, YOLA, embrace it because, you know, if Shakespeare was here, he'd be creating it, come on. If we were stuck to old English right now, you wouldn't be able to understand me. <laughs> Quite frankly, you know, so it's move and grow. I don't think we should ever just go, oh gosh, those are roots, we should, we should. It happened, move on. Again, a bit sparse, um, not really for me. Ah, sounds like they're going to be uh, having a dancer up here soon. It's okay. So the job of an artist is not to be a dictator and impose their ideas on you. Um, you know, follow your heart and uh, really if it gets people thinking and talking about your art brilliant it, it, even if somebody turns around and says they hate it it's great because they're communicating and it's affected them in some way it's opened them up in some way they might have been somebody who's isolated for a while or deeply depressed and if they're deeply depressed they don't necessarily want to talk about it but if they suddenly see a piece of artwork that they absolutely hate with passion Guess what? They're talking about it. No. Mm, no. Dark. Darkish. I was just looking at them as individual pieces. Um, but yeah, I could see that maybe it was during quite a, a difficult time and people are using it as a form of expression. Uh, to release what they might be feeling. So that's why you've got like a bit of the dark colours. It's like having a rainy day out there and it's going to affect, affect how you feel and what you think. And so I wonder if that's what it's about, about trying to break free through that. A bit like gospel music did uh, for people, I guess. It was there, or flamenco dancing did for people to just, that is their form of rebelling. Maybe.